Hello. Well, this just pretty much, this made my day um, talking to my husband today. Uh, I was thinking about time and how we used to be late to everything. Um, everywhere we went, we didn't, I mean, we'd even go to like banquetings and different, I don't go to much of that stuff anymore, but I used to go to like the family gatherings and stuff and I would call you back later. I used to go to, we'd go to family gatherings and um, before anybody got a chance to get up, yeah, I, we would get up first as if we're entitled and go start grabbing food when it's not even, no one's, no one's getting up to, to eat it yet. That's how we acted. I mean, I can't blame the altering our mind on, for everything, but yes, we were intoxicated everywhere we went. Um, and that's what we did. Um, that's what I did. <laughs> I, yeah, I had no grat gratitude for nothing. Um, I would have things given to me. I acts of kindness, kindness done towards me. And, um, there would be no, like, I couldn't say thank you. I, yeah, I went through, I went through a phase like that and it was, and it was a dark, it was a dark heart, a dark, a dark, wicked, ungrateful, um, bitter heart that I had. Yeah. Um, you know, and I would blame my abusers. I blame my childhood. I blame this. I blame that. I blame this and that for why I did the things that I did or the acting the way I acted. But no, I was just filled up with a lot of lesions is what the truth is. But this made my day, um, thinking about time. I said to my husband today, he said, <laughs> uh, what Jesus teaches me is that we must value time. Value time, right? Time is all we have. So when we used to show up late to everything, I mean, everything doesn't matter what it is. We'd be like, oh, I promise I'll be there. And sometimes we won't show up at all. People be waiting on us. I said, we don't aim to do that now. I value time and show up on time best I can. Things happen, of course, but it's not that old pattern of late to everything everywhere. Who can relate to that? We all could at one point. I mean, that was me. That was, that was us. That was us. Didn't care. Selfish. Very selfish. Um, yeah, this something Jesus shows me about valuing our time, right? And I just, you know, love what he says here. Uh, Jesus is so good, you know, because Jesus came in his father's name. God is good, you know? So Jesus is good. You, 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 yeah, praise Jesus. You know, he came in his father's name. It is praising God. <laughs> Him and the father are one. So he is perfect. He is perfecting our character. Awesome. Uh, yeah, it's awesome. He's perfecting our character. Yeah, so when he, we come to him in brokenness and our heart is black and dark and we've got envy and strife and selfishness and greed and just manifestations of a wicked, evil heart. That's what would manifest, a wicked, evil heart. And you'd see it in our behavior. You'd see it, no gratitude, no, no gratefulness, none of that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, he gives us a heart transplant, a new heart, a heart that's after the Lord that loves the Lord. And if you love me, I'll keep my commandments and walk in them. Right. But he causes us to do it. We can't do it on our own. He literally gives us a new heart, an obedient heart. That's what comes. The grace is that Jesus died on the cross for us. He covered our sin debt. Uh, God provided a perfect lamb and shed the blood of his only begotten son. Yeah. And he died and the third day he rose from the dead and he is the resurrection and the life. That's the grace that he died for your sins, the sins of the whole world. If you believe on him and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, but there's more that happens. That's the grace. We don't deserve that. That's the grace. But he gives you an obedient heart. He gives you a new heart and a new mind. He literally frees you from your captivity, your bondage. He shows you the power through the power of the Holy Spirit and the instructions in the word, how to put to death the, the works that the flesh has its own works too. You know, if they call it like it's a working faith or like, oh, you're adding works, you know, the law to grace. No, it's a, the flesh has its own works too. You know, we got to put those works to death, but we do it through the power of the Holy Spirit. But that's evidence that Christ is in you. How else can you know? Um, you know, that, that stuff will manifest. It's real. It's, being born again, the rebirth is a real thing that happens. It's not just, I'm speaking, I believe, and that's it. There's, there's, there's more, there's, there's more that happens, uh, a new heart, a new mind. So you literally get a new heart and the godly saw repentance and you listen to the Holy Spirit. Um, and he convicts you. He shows you which reading the word. He shows you what is sin and what these works of iniquity works of the flesh are. So we're either work in flesh, flesh works, or you're working righteousness, which is Christ's righteousness in you. But anyway, this is really awesome. He's perfecting our character. Yeah. Um, rooting out that stony heart. He's literally going to the root of it and he's ripping it out he's cutting it out and he's ripping out ripping it out at the root and, and he's getting rid of and pruning us and getting rid of all that all the bad he's getting rid of all the bad 
He's taking the bad out and replace, replacing it with the good. Okay, he's taking that wicked, evil, ungrateful, uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> ungrateful, selfish heart. I'm trying to get my dog. Uh, ungrateful, selfish heart, you know, that me, 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 and I, 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 you know, like the pride, the pride, the haughtiness, and the pride, and the rebellion, which is a sin of witchcraft, and it's just iniquity. It's transgression. So my husband says, I love how you just put that. Well, it's true. Simple and so true. Jesus is perfecting our character. That's what he does. When the Father and Jesus come and make their abode in you and you abide in the vine, you have to abide. You know, you, you can forfeit your salvation. You have to abide in the vine and continue in all things and endure unto the end. You got to strive your soldier in a real spiritual battle, a real spiritual war. So, of course, I smile because that's a beautiful thing. Jesus is perfecting her character. We used to be late to everything. How do you just change? Even when I want it to be on time, I felt this spirit in me that just couldn't, couldn't, um, couldn't match it. It just, it just couldn't obey. It just couldn't do it. it There's no desire. There's no desire. I didn't think about the other person or, or that time is precious. I abused time, I abused everything that God gave me. You know, you have to, a change of heart happens and he causes you to love what God loves and hate what God hates, right? Time is, my husband says, time is precious. It is. Um, Jesus is trying to guide us. Jesus is trying to guide all of us to the eternal time. <laughs> it's not just time here. This time is temporary. This, this goes out like a vapor. This is a little bit of time like this compared to like, like, like an eternity. It's kind of like, I guess I can show it like, um, I don't know if. I won't be able to, okay, I won't be able to, I don't know how to use, I don't know how to use this, uh, this, uh, recorder thing. So yeah, time is like this. It's not long. It seems long to us because we're in time. God's outside of time. He's can be in time, you know, omnipresent, omnipotent. Um, Trixie, sorry, my dog, but time is little. It's just a little bit of time. It's just a little bit of time compared to eternity. So time's precious. Jesus is trying to guide all of us to the eternal time. Yeah, we have a chance to spend at the right hand of our Father with Him. Yeah, so when you look at Jesus, you see the Father. We just spend that. The right hand, the right hand, the hand of authority, power. You know, He's victor over the grave. Yeah, He is the resurrection and the life. He's the only way in. The only mediator, the only intercessor. He's the only way. The only way in there. So at the right hand, you want to be a wheat. You know, when the wheat gets blown up and um, blown into the air, into the wind, you know, uh, the storms of life, the trials, the tribulations, you're, he's testing your faith. Um, you know, he's because tribulation works patience, you know, and patience works hope. So he's trying us. So when we get thrown up like wheat and Satan desires to sift you like wheat, like you said to Peter, he throws us up in the air, the storms of our life. And you don't want to be like the chaff and blow away in the wind. You know, God's word, the wheat will stand. But the chaff, what is the word of the, what's the, what's the chaff to the wheat, right? right? It's nothing. The wheat won't, the wheat stands. He gathers the wheat into his barn and the chaff burns up on unquenchable fire. And that is the worm that never dies. And the smoke of their tor torment ascendeth forever and ever. Yes, hell is real. Hell is real. I believe hell is real. Um, yeah, this stuff's real. And we choose, you choose to go there because if you don't want God now, you're not going to want him later. If you don't want to obey him now and he gives you a heart to obey. People don't think that they think just believe and you don't have to obey and that's not part of salvation. It is. It is. Because when you get born again of water and spirit to see the kingdom of God, a circumcision of the heart happens. You're a Jew inwardly. It's a real spiritual circumcision of the heart. You get pricked in your heart, a circumcision of the heart. He gives you a new heart. He takes out the stony heart, replaces it with the heart of flesh so he can mold you into the image of Jesus and do this perfect our character and I, there's evidence of it because I used to be late to everything and I never valued these things and I didn't have gratitude for anybody um oh yeah so that's that's really awesome right there um but yeah also on the right hand is you know his sheep and we have a shepherd you don't want to be a sheep without a shepherd you know and he'll go looking for that lost one that's what Jesus does he's an awesome shepherd awesome so yeah uh, you don't want to be a goat being, you know, getting called a goat and that I'm adding works to the, you know, to grace. But no, the grace is that God gave his only begotten son. That whosoever shall believe on him shall have eternal life, right? Yeah, that's the grace. We don't deserve it. And the grace actually, it's not a grace, isn't grace isn't a license to keep sinning. We don't want to abuse God's grace and we should hate sin. And someone else told me, I'm not, they said about themselves, 
I'm not looking at sin. I'm looking at Jesus. Well, here's the thing. When you're looking at Jesus, the light is going to expose the darkness in you. Um, so you're, you're saying you're not looking at sin. You're looking at Jesus, the Son of God. But the Son of God, Jesus, is going to have you look at your sin. That's the point. If you're really looking at Jesus, you're going to have a transformed mind. and a trans That's the blessing, in a transformed life. Your, your new mind is going to manifest habits and action outwardly. Um, you're going to start doing things, applying the word to your life, and he's going to convict you, and you're, you're going to mature in the faith, and you're going to start looking not like the world so much. Okay, it's a walk, but he's going to prune you, and he's going to make you, mold you into that. You can't just remain as you are. You come as you are, but you don't stay as you are, okay? But uh, but they said that they don't look at sin like I, I'm looking at, they said I'm obsessed with sin. I'm not looking at sin. I'm looking at Jesus, and Jesus the light that came into the world, you know, that's the father is the light. Jesus had his, the father's word. So he's that the word was made flesh. The father's word, the father's in him. So it's the Holy Spirit is in him. So when you look at Jesus, when you're looking at the light, that's why he says, this is the condemnation. Okay, now those that are in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation for us in Christ. But we're putting the deeds of the, you cannot please God if you're walking in the flesh. If you walk after the spirit, that's what he desires for us to worship him in spirit and in truth. So if you're walking after the spirit, that's pleasing to God. And he's the one doing this, the power of his might, putting to death the deeds of the flesh and the lust of the flesh and warring against it, putting your body under subjection, like Paul said, right? Not to let anything in this world have dominion over you. That's true. And it takes time. It takes time. Um, but he says, this is the condemnation, that light, okay, Jesus, light, um, God spoke light. So it's, it's the father is the word, okay? So the kind of, this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light. Why? Because their deeds, these are works, their deeds, were evil. So if you're looking at sin too much, this person told me, I'm looking at sin too much, and they're looking at Jesus. Well, if you're really looking at the true Jesus, if you're looking at the light that came into the world, if you're looking at the true Jesus, then Jesus is going to shine into your soul your soul is your mind, your emotions, your will, all that stuff, your thoughts. He's going to shine that light of truth into your soul and expose what you are in there. Because the hearts of men are wicked. Who can know it? But God knows it. So he's going to shine that light in there and expose your deeds. And if you are not going to come to the light, it's because your deeds are evil and you love darkness rather than light. So that's why people will not, they'll say, I'm not going to pay attention to sin. Well, if you're looking at Jesus, he's going to show you your sin. That's the point. The light is going to always show you it. He's going to convict you. Okay. So this person that said this to me, um, yeah, um, that I'm looking at sin too much and he looks at Jesus. Well, here's the thing. The true Jesus is going to show you your sin and expose it. And he's going to change you, transform you, a circumcision of the heart, a godly sorrow repentance is going to be granted onto you, onto salvation. Yeah, you're going to have a repentant, obedient heart. It's not going to be worldly sorrow where you only say sorry because you got caught or you only say sorry because of the consequences you feel bad. And that's worldly sorrow. This is godly sorrow. It's different. And you're, you're after God's heart. God's moving in you. He's moving in you. You have the Holy Spirit. It's power. It's not just you're the same. You, you'll be regenerated. Regeneration of the Holy Spirit. You won't look the same. Okay? You don't want to be a cursed fig tree and wither away and have no good fruit produce on it, right? Um, Jesus, the vine keeps those leaves green and then, you know, there's always fruit being produced and he's always pruning and fiery flying, fiery, fiery trials and tribulations, persecutions, but it's all for his namesake, right? For his namesake. So it's all for his glory. So yeah, so look to Jesus, the true Jesus, and he's going to show, he's going to show you sin. Jesus preached, repent, or you shall all likewise perish. You know, go and sin no more. People, the first sin is obviously of sin because they believe not on me. They believe not on Jesus. Yes, first you have to have faith and believe he is who he is. Believe God, you know, um, be diligent, seeking him. He's a rewarder of them that um, are diligently seeking him. You know, and he wants you to, to believe that he is he, that he is who he says he is. So yeah, that is the first thing. The, the sin is to, of unbelief. But once you believe, he comes, he comes in, you get... You conversion's real. You don't look the same. You don't stay the same. 
You definitely do not stay the same. You get a new heart. He causes you. It's real. It's power. It's real. So I just thought this was cool. And this really, this really made, made my day. Um, yeah, if I just, um, you know, stay in the word every day. That's it. Stay in, stay in the word every day. That's the way to do it. Stay in the word every day and focus on other people um, doing, yeah, just doing good. The Lord will lead you to do that kind of stuff. So I don't know. I just, I just wanted to share this because that was pretty awesome. But um, look to Jesus um, and take heed to the Holy Spirit conviction because you don't want to be him to convict, convict, convict. And then if you ignore the convictions over time, you get calloused. All right. And then, and then you won't be as sensitive in the spirit to hear the conviction and then you'll be given over eventually to reprobate mind. And, you know, people fall away too, where they're in the word and then they fall out of the word. You know, you can, you can forfeit your salvation. So this once saved, always saved and just kick up your feet. And I believe, and just profess with your mouth. Why does God say that they profess with their lips and they honor me with their mouth, but their heart is far from me because the heart transplant didn't take place. Um, they weren't given the new heart. They didn't continue in him. They didn't really believe because, yes, we walk by faith and not by sight. But your faith, he says, you know, examine yourself. Know you not whether Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. You should know because there should be this. Jesus is perfecting our character. And you'll see evidence of it because even people that know you, they'll know the character who you were before. You can't pretend. I could act like this for only so long, okay? You can't pretend. Um, you know, everything comes to light. Um, he's really changing. It's a heart issue. He's changing the hearts. He's changing the heart. And if you keep pushing away, it is God who will harden, 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 like he did with Pharaoh, harden, harden, harden the heart. And you'll get calloused. So listen to the Holy Spirit convictions. And if you're not being convicted, because the Holy Spirit came to convict the world of sin, right? And of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. And that's Satan, Lucifer, the prince of the power of this air. The prince of the power of the air. Um, you know, and people are running on seducing spirits. So there's a difference between um, judging after the flesh and righteous judgment. You know, when we speak the truth and love. Um, but yeah, this is really cool. So um, God bless you in Jesus name and stay encouraged. Keep your joy. Don't let anyone take your joy. Fruit should manifest. Joy, peace, the sound mind right? Patience, which is long suffering, meekness, or meek and quiet spirit. Um, yeah, which is really awesome. <laughs> I might as well add something if it lets me go on to YouTube and do this. Um, this was, this was a, uh, submission to your husband, like a poll. Um, should we submit all the time or only if my husband's nice to me? I, I said all the time, because when you submit until your, your husband, first you're submitting to the Lord, you know, and to your husband. And then that, and that means you are submitting to the Lord because you're abiding in what he instructs you to do, right? So if me and my husband are having a problem um, or, or like if he does something and I, and I don't agree with it, well, I used to rub it in his face. I used to be that loud woman, right? The brawling woman. Um, wear the shoes. Wear the, pa wear the pants in the household and try to rule over him and all this, all this kind of stuff and beat him down and make him feel bad. I mean, that's just that, that was the character that I had. That was the spirits that I was running on. But now it's much different. So if he does something and say he doesn't listen or or something to what I'm saying, you know, I yeah, I just I just let it go. Leave it leave it in the Lord's hands, you know. And then um, don't rub it in his face, even if it comes back and and say he's wrong about something, you know. And well, then God will show it. God will show it to him. Um, that's the kind of faith that I have now. And I and I actually like I actually like being being uh, doing it the way that God says I should be as a wife. I like God's way. It's actually um, really awesome. <laughs> um, and it helps. We have a good marriage. Okay, so anyway, I said always. Uh, it's about submitting about submitting to your husband, not just not just when he when he's nice to you. Okay, always. God will deal with his disobedient heart if needed. Um, win him with your conversation of Jesus in fear and meek and quiet spirit. Um, it means you put the Lord first. Also, it's good. Well, someone replied and said, a disobedient man cannot be turned around. By the conversations you have with him. It's by your actions you win him again to Christ, not words. Okay, it's true. But if, if you're having conversation, it is in your demeanor, it's in your actions. Uh, it Yeah, of, co of course. Of course, it's your behavior and actions. But what I was going by is uh, the scripture here. I said, oh, I didn't even, huh, oh, oh, I didn't even know other people. Okay, this is awesome. All right, someone already put, somebody already put this verse. Um, true. Likewise, wives be subject to your own husbands so that even if some do not obey the word, 
they may be one without the word by the conduct of their wives. Okay, now the conduct. Um, see how that's another that's another Bible version. That's not King James Bible by the conduct. Well, in the here someone says in the KJV conversation means conduct behavior. Yeah, but it's still conversation because I did this. I've been doing this and it's working. And of course, my conduct and my conversation go together. My conversation's good. My conduct's good. The behavior's good. Do I fall short? Do I make mistakes? Of course I do. But of course, actions. But my husband has turned around from his blowups. Um, my conversation is meek and gentle, and I'm not a loud, brawling woman like I used to be. Well, that's true. Uh, God delivers. I always give my testimony, the captivity that he freed us from, because that's the hope that you have if you come to the true Jesus Christ. He is a deliverer, a redeemer. He frees the prisoners. You know, he opens the prison house to them that are bound. Okay, that's my favorite part. That's that's the gospel, okay? That's what he did. Um, to open the blind eyes, right? And turn them from darkness to light. From the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive. Okay, to open the blind eyes, right? So spiritually opening their blind eyes. To turn them from darkness to light. So they were in darkness, now you're in light. From the power of Satan, darkness, the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins um, and sanctified in faith that is through me. Um, through Jesus, right? So turning them. The gospel. Awesome, right? That's what he does. So God delivered us from drug addiction three years ago. Weed and drink. Praise God. But of course, it's my demeanor and how I respond to things. But... By that and my conversation coupled with fear, so I don't go off on him or if he makes mistakes, I don't say, I told you so. Don't do that anymore, but I used to do that. I used, yeah, it'd, it'd always be fighting. It'd always be, um, I wasn't a peacemaker before. Wow. Um, whenever, I mean, even if someone's trying to make peace, I'd have the last word. I'd 20 minutes would go by, be quiet, and I would reignite the flame and start that conversation all over again because I always have to get my point across. I have to get my point across. If you're doing that, God will help God help you to stop doing that. Um, that's a character flaw for sure. That's not good. I used to do that. I'm not changing myself. This is not, not changing myself, okay? Just telling you the power of the Holy Spirit is real, the conversion and the circumcision of the heart and the new character traits, perfecting our character. That's very real. This is real. This is the real gospel. This is the power. Don't walk in having a form of godliness, but deny the power, right? Don't deny the power that he converts you and changes you. Um, so I said, um, so if he makes mistakes, um, I don't say, I told you so. I used to. Um, I am changed in the inner man. Changed in the inner man. Yes, praise God. You put on a new garment. It's awesome. Um, I hold my I hold my peace and the Lord shows him where he is in error, whatever it may be. At first it was by my conversation about Jesus. And that's true. I would at times um, bring the word to him. You know, like with video games. I would show him sinning in your heart. Uh, if you're murder, murder in your heart, you know, that's that, that hating in your heart is the same as murder, um, doing headshots and different things. After repeating this scripture for some time, one day, he just got up, took all of his gaming systems and games, and threw them in the dumpster. That's how it works. And that was speaking with the word. I didn't know this scripture yet, but God is good. Okay, so then conversation. Just me. Oh, conversation. Just um, having my conversation be good. Wholesome. Good conversation. Not arguing. Not fighting. Not like any of that. Not any of that kind of stuff, you know? Um no, no, none of the rage and stuff, even when he was going through rage and, um, you know, and we were tearing this house apart, not this house, but a different house, maybe a little bit of this house too, um, at some point. Uh, but, but yeah, but yeah, over, over time, yeah, I had to, I had to hold my peace and the Lord was perfecting my character as he's perfecting my husband's character also. And he will perfect your character too. I was like, just gotta listen to the Holy, just gotta listen to the Holy Spirit convictions. It's all real. Uh, so I hold my peace and the Lord shows me where he is in error. Now, I'm talking fast because I don't know how much time space I have on this phone. So, and I talk fast anyway because I get excited. Um, so, at first, it was my conversation about Jesus and how I act in the home. But now we are in the word together. Because likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husband. Don't go have emotional ties talking to other men, um, you know, um, I might minister or give a couple of scriptures to some people from high school. I cut a lot of that off because um, some of it was getting carnal. 
And um, I don't know if it was forming some kind of emotional connection, um, talking about something other than the word, um, just being like, oh, how are you? And I don't, I don't know, but that's dangerous to do. You don't want to have some kind of, if you're not, you want to keep all your conversations to be with your husband. This is what the Lord's showing me. If I give some scriptures to somebody, but I don't need to be having friends that are male, that are males and talking to males. If I get a scripture here and there, fine, but not to have a conversation, um, like, like, like getting personal or intimate about things or talking about, talking about things. I mean, I've even given my testimony and even part of that seemed to me like, um, is this kind of, is, is that, I mean, I know giving a testimony is one thing, but talking about who I was and what I am, I don't know. I just, I don't want to, there's a fine line there. Um, you know, um, I don't want flesh to be like thinking, oh, there's some kind of emotional connection that I'm trying to seek through somebody else. Um, so yeah, we gotta be, we gotta be careful who we're talking to, um, as, as women. And I know, um, a lot of women are not going to like hearing that and they're not going to like this verse either. Likewise, ye wives be in subjection to your own husbands. Go to your husbands for emotional support. Tell him about your day. Don't don't go to a, another fry, guy friend and tell him about your day. I was doing that. There there was no bad intentions behind it, but it's um it's emotional thing. It's like um why why would I have to tell some other some other man about my day? The Lord's showing me this, so I'm sharing this with you because, like I said, I'm not perfect, but He's showing He's showing me things. He's showing me things, and I'm I'm sharing them. I hope they help you. You know, I'm just humbling myself, I'm showing you what He's showing me. Um. You don't need to seek out um, an emotional connection with another man if you're married. Um, you don't need to be um, telling them about your day. Um, none of that kind of stuff. Okay, so don't do that. Don't do. Don't. I mean, I'm not doing. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be doing that. So likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own, your own husband, your own husband. Tell your husband about your day. Don't look at your husband like he's like nothing. Um, you know, after a while, like like the, that that feeling might might fade. That, but you can reignite that because we've had that happen to us. Um, but you become one flesh with your husband. So that's why I'm so comfortable with Jeremy because it's like the same comfort I have with myself. We're one flesh. We're married. We're, it's a union, a covenant, um, a union between, you know, between husband and wife. You know, it's, it's holy and it's, and it's good and sacred. Um, but that's why I'm so comfortable. It's just the comfort of my, myself, you know. Um, definitely no lust there or anything like that. It's love. It's love. Okay, so I, I know that... I know the difference. I don't know if I'm explaining it right. But likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, so if they're not, so if my husband's not obeying God's word, and he's been being diso disobedient to God's word, okay, that they may, without the word, um, be won by the conversation of the wife. So yes, the conduct, the conversation, um, how I go about handling things and how you speak, how you speak to your husband's important too, and what you say, and he'll hear your conversation of the wives, the conversation, the conduct. It's all, it's all good. And I said, I believe what God says. He says by your conversation, and it worked, and it's true. Of course, my conduct had much to do with it, but what I speak, Jeremy hears, and and then we pray, and then God's healing him of things. And uh, look at what he you saw what he said today. He loved, he loved that, and it, it clicked. He's like, my character's being changed too because we did do that. We didn't care about time and people, other people's time and wasting people's time, wasting God's time, wasting our own time. Um, I'm grateful, little brats. He sees it too. Um, and he said, oh, the power of the Holy Spirit is not the ways of man. Oh, nice. And they said, praise God. That is so good to hear. May he continue to bless your journey together in him. Well, of course I like that. Thank you very much. And always bless everybody. Bless everybody, even your enemies. Okay, so I just, just wanted to, to show you that. Um, but hey.